Mixer is the all new and free texture authoring program by the makers of the Megascans library, Quixel, which is also free if you use the Unreal Engine. Mixer allows you to mix together textures, either your own or from the Megascans library, along with hand-painted details and procedural mask to create professional level textures for things like your video games or movies or whatever 3D scenes you want to do. To get started, you just want to add a new mix and you can set a name or you can save that for later. But what is important to do right now is figure out what kind of resolution you want to be working at. I'm going to work at 2048 and that's because if I work at 4096, my computer gets kind of slow if I'm doing a complicated mix, you want it to be as high as you can get without getting slow in performance, unless you're just making a lower resolution texture. You can always export higher, so I can make it in 2048 and then export it at 4K or 8K or whatever. So I'm actually just gonna use something that I did, so just double click and get in. When you get started, you're usually gonna be in the setup tab, which has things like your resolution that you just set, it has your type, which is going to be a plane if you're just doing a tiling material, which we'll do in this video, or a 3D model, which we will get to in a later video. Also have the size, which you can use for some specific settings in size in certain places in the application. And then we go back to the layers tab over here. Now we have a base layer, which we can set some stuff, but we won't worry about that for now. I have that turned off and I just have a rock cliff layer and a desert sand layer. Now these are of the type surface layer which will go into your local library which is all the stuff that you have installed on your computer already which is a bunch of textures i've downloaded and you should have some by default i believe now you can also go online if you have mega scans which you should if you have unreal engine and download some of the stuff here so if i click on this one maybe I can use the download settings and set some specific things like the resolution or what textures I need. Or I could just use a preset such as Unreal if you're working on Unreal or Unity if you use Unity. And I can hit download and I'll be in my local library and I can add it in such as that. But I'll just delete it. Quixel works with displacement and height as its way of working. So if I rotate with a Alt and left click dragging you can see that it goes up in the parts where there's rock. Now I can turn off displacement with this thing or just pressing D and that will be good for previewing something that you might put in a game where displacement is usually too expensive, but it's usually best when you're working to have displacement turned on. And now with our desert sand layer checked, I'll show you that this threshold is basically just the height of the displacement. So as you can see, as it starts low, it's down below, it's probably somewhere around here, our rock layer. And if I bring it up, it goes from below and it pushes up the sand and it can go up. And then we can have them blended in between. There's also a from below setting here, which I can change to from above. If I have the threshold all the way down, it's going to be above my rock. And then I can bring it down and as it goes down, You'll see that it cuts off the top of the rock and it puts the sand there. So these are both good for certain things. And then there's opacity masked, which just has the threshold be the height. And since it's opacity is all the way set to one, it's completely visible. And if I lower the opacity, it becomes less visible. Opacity is also on from above and below too. Now, normally with opacity masked, you'd want to set a texture here. Show, load. And then you can have it a mask such as this and you can see parts of it you can see and parts of it you can't but that's kind of a weird texture to use i'll turn it back to from below so after our threshold the next setting you'll see is this radius which as you can see if i look up close it's blended here a little bit so if i increase it it has a bigger blending radius and if i lower it, it has a lower radius so it's a super sharp transition here. So if I raise that, oh, not the threshold, raise the radius, you'll see that it blends in in a farther distance. And if I lower 
the preserved details will be completely blurred the transition. Well, if I raise it, it's going to sharpen the transition and it's going to use height data to basically give us individual grains of sand, which can look nicer. So you might want to have a decent amount of preserved detail scene. Now with our placement settings, we got tiling, which just tiles it with a certain amount of repetition. So as you can see, I can increase this and I'll repeat the texture more times. So it's actually a lot smaller now, or I can set to like one and then it's going to be smaller, but we'll leave it at two for now. We also got offset, which just slides the texture over and we can turn off tiling on one direction or the other. We also got free form, which just puts the texture in place with no tiling. So I can give it an offset or I could rotate it or I could scale it to a different size. Uh, speaking of tiling, if you press T or click on this thing, you can preview the tiling, which is nice to see if there's any obvious areas where it's repeating. And as you can see, there's this big rock area here, which is pretty obviously repeating. So this isn't great setup. You'd want to make no really obvious areas if you're going to tile it. Another settings that you got are the wrap to underline here, which I think I forgot. But as you can see, if I increase the wrap to underline, it's going to shape it to this rock. And if I turn it down the blur underline here. So if I turn this off, you'll see that the shape of the displacement is exactly the same on both the rock and the desert sand. But if I lower it, you'll see that the sand is basically just kind of flat where it is or blended a little bit. So if I turn it down to blending radius, it's basically just flat there. But I can wrap it to underline somewhat and then maybe do blur. And then it's kind of like the sand is in there and shaped to it but blurred so you don't have the actual shape of the rock, which would look a little weird. Next, we got our height frequency, which I'm gonna actually go and turn off my desert sand with this little eye guy, and I'll use my rock to show you this. So this is basically how strong the displacement is in certain areas. So you got your high frequency detail, which is the, the small details, the low frequency detail, which is the big ones. So if I increase the low frequency, you'll see that the big details like the the big rock shapes here are going to get smaller or bigger, depending on where I put it. And the high frequency details, which are like the little bumps on the rock, well, they're going to get bigger. So as you see over here, this little bumps and stuff, they get bigger or smaller based off that. And the threshold basically just decides at what point does it change, whether it's high frequency or low frequency. So if I increase that, you'll see that it has only the very little bit of shape considered low frequency. But if I lower the threshold, you'll see that what it considers to be low frequency increases to the point where it includes even high frequency details. Here we got our textures and our colors. So we have a texture loaded here, so I could load a different one if I wanted to for our albedo, which is our color. We got our color. So we can set our sand to any color we wanted to actually, rather than just the default. We got our blend mode, so we can, instead of just place it on top, which is what normal would be, we can change it to be multiply and it'll multiply them together, which makes it dark or any of these other ones, but we'll just leave on normal. We also got opacity, which shows how visible it is. So it becomes invisible with the color but not with our other textures, such as our mellowness and roughness. Same as if I just turned this off, if I turned the opacity all the way down. Similar to the opacity, we have a match to underline, which if I turn it up all the way, it will match the general color to the general color of what's underneath it. So it becomes a more gray, but it is not the same as the opacity because that would make it exactly the same. Well, this is still sand, but a gray sand like our rock. We also got our contrast, which we can increase the contrast or lower it. And we got invert source, 
same with our metalness and roughness, except for we can change the metalness to be white, which will make it completely metal, or black, which will make it completely not metal. And generally speaking, you won't have things that are in between, except for like rare occasions and like anti-aliasing. Roughness, which is how rough or smooth a surface is, which affects whether it's got more of a flat, dull shading or whether it's got a shiny one. So right now it's almost completely rough at white. If I turn it down, I can make it much more of a shiny color by making it making it fully smooth. Then on normals, we got invert X and we got invert Y. This is super important because each 3D program has a different coordinate system. So their directions are all mixed up and it affects the normals direction. So some programs you might need to invert it or else you might have something like something that's supposed to look like it's going inside based off its shading actually look like it's going outside when you put it into a different program. Now we got a few different types of surfaces such as a decal surface which if we choose one of the decals I installed such as this crack we'll have a crack in there and it's basically the same as a surface layer except for it's set to opacity masked with an opacity texture. And then it's usually set to wrap to underline by default. And then it also has a placement set to freeform. So I can go and move this crack to over here maybe. I can increase its scale and I can maybe rotate it. After that, we got our solid layer, which is also basically the same as a surface layer. Except for right now, it just doesn't have any textures applied to it yet. So you can load your own texture, such as this. Or I could remove it and just use a color. I can choose a metalness, so I can make it metal by changing it to right. Choose a roughness, make it nice and smooth. Now we got a nice red metal. Uh, I'm going to skip over liquid at first, and now I'm going to go to noise. Now noise basically is just a mathematical equation that creates bumps. So if I increase the amplitude, you'll see that the bumps get bigger. If I increase the frequency, you'll see that they there's more bumps basically. And if I lower it, there's less bumps and the bumps get bigger. So more smaller bumps. Now octaves, lacunarity and persistence are just based off the details. So if I increase the the octaves, maybe tweak it a little bit, see if we can get something cool. So this actually kind of starting to look a little bit like a mountain range, which is pretty cool. And then I can add a liquid layer, which just adds liquid. You can change the threshold and now it's like we got a lake or an ocean and we have an island or something. So here's our island. We also got a paint layer, which is pretty self-explanatory. You just paint stuff on. It's pretty simple right now. We just got a brush and an eraser tool. We got different brush shapes, which you can actually get online with your library to add more. So I can just use a round soft brush. And I can add some stuff here. See it's white. If I change the colors, I can maybe make a kind of scion in color, maybe make it metal. Could change the roughness if I want. I can increase the displacement, which you'll see is pushing it down because it's set to lower displacement here. I can change it to raise displacement. I can see that it gets raised and I can set to set displacement, which will just set it to whatever displacement I have. So I can set it to high or I can set it to low. And you got settings like your size of your brush, the angle, the spacing, the opacity, and the softness and the curve shape. And then you got your jitter and stuff, which is randomness. All self-explanatory if you ever used any painting application ever. And I can maybe add a paint mask down here. And you can see that if I have it set to black, it's invisible. If I set it to white, it becomes fully visible.
Uh, I believe this actually even completely overrides what it would normally be based off of the threshold and such. There's also other tools such as a mask stack, which is a procedural mask system, which we'll get to in the next video, and a material ID mask, which we'll get to in the video after that with 3D texturing. And then we also got groups so we can group together our layers. And if you group together layers, what you can do is you can actually add them into their own smart material, which you can use export as smart material. And if you export that, it'll be added to your library. And then you can add that to your 3D models if you want to. We also got some export settings. You got your name of your texture set followed by the name of your map so that you have your color maps being your albedo and then you have your metalness and all that stuff. You got your export location, got create subfolder, add resolution to file names, and open folder after export. Then you got your f export format, which can be whatever you want. You can set it to say PNG. You got your resolution that you're going to export to. So if you want to export this at a higher resolution, you can. Now, 8K is at the time not considered something that you should generally do, but it might work, might not, because this is still in beta. Now we got a lot of types by default. Now you can remove some that you don't need by either disabling them or clicking remove map. I don't need speckler or glass because I use Unreal, which doesn't use those. Now you can export them as individual maps, which will have them all in the same channel, but you might actually want to add a map and pack them into their own map. So I can have say metalness as red and then green could be roughness if I can find it and then blue could be the ME inclusion and then you have them all into one map and then you can save some memory when you're using a video game or something that would like to save some texture memory and then you can just name that something like MRAO. If you found this video helpful please like subscribe and hit the notification bell it'd be really helpful for my channel and you'll see more videos on 3d and specifically in blender thank you for watching